Welcome. In this module, we're going to talk about security hardening for software applications. Now, we're talking about software applications which are developed internally inside your organization or which are outsourced or developed by a security vendor. But the difference here is that this is not going to be software which is off the so-called off-the-shelf software from Oracle, IBM, or Microsoft, or some other company. So this is something that is going to be based on maybe ASP.NET or PHP or C Sharp or C++. And this is something that, you know, perhaps like a, like a small software house would develop. And many companies, many organizations, which includes banks and telecoms and enterprises and, and many companies in the industry, uh, even uh, many governed organizations, they have an internal software division and that develops software, uh, but they are not software companies. Uh, their business may be uh, retail or it may be in, they may be a food chain, uh, but they they develop their own software. So this is this is in this module we're going to talk about how to secure the software which we develop ourselves. So there are two types of security hardening. Um, one is for IT assets, which is for systems, which is like computers, servers, uh, workstations, network devices, databases, applications. So these are all IT assets. And this is more off the shelf kind of hardening because it, you, you're running a Cisco or a Juniper network device, or you're running um, a Microsoft operating system, or you're running um, Oracle database. And the hardening would be for that particular uh, IT asset, which has been developed by a vendor, which we call off the shelf software. Now, software developed internally or by third parties is what we're gonna talk about in this module. So what does the typical enterprise software look like? Usually, most companies have an enterprise resource planning or ERP software. Maybe it's developed by Oracle, SAP, IBM. You may even develop your, yourself, or it may be developed by a third party. And um, there's an internally or third party developed software on, um, uh, on platforms such as ASP.NET, PHP, Android, iOS, if it's a mobile application, or other platform. And this is what we're going to focus on. Okay, so um, the ERPs of the world from the large vendors like Oracle, SAPs, IBM, usually they're quite secure. And you would focus more on uh, two aspects for these ERPs, which are from Oracle or IBM. One is hardening the server. The server configuration needs to be hardened. And the other one is that um, you would implement the business controls and the business logic needs to be tightly controlled. Um, but usually the good companies um, have a very good handle on the security of these leading global ERP solutions from such companies as SAP, for example. And they keep pushing out updates, which you can install. So uh, as I said, we're going to focus on the third-party software like ASP.NET, PHP, uh, you know, even C++, for example. So this is another view of what we had seen earlier for the eight-step security hardening methodology. And for software, we will also follow exactly the same methodology. What is the methodology? Let's just walk through it quickly. Number one, identify the critical assets. And, and many times we're referring to, because there's a lot of work to do. So we're what we're going to do is we're going to prioritize um, based on criticality, based on risk, based on threat. So if, if there's a software application which is exposed to the internet, it's more critical than maybe an internal application. If it's a software application which is running financial transactions or which is doing money transfers, it's more critical than maybe an application which is taking stock of inventory, for example. If it's a software application which has HR confidential salary data, it's more critical application than any other application which, for example, provides a project management dashboard. So. You have to identify the criticality and the priority. And step number two is we will research the controls which are applicable for that particular asset. It could be ASP.NET uh, application developed by your software developer inside the company. Then we uh, make a checklist of the applicable controls, a little bit of documentation, and enter that into the SOP in step four. In step five, we implement the controls in a test setup. The test setup is very important, as we have been discussing, because we cannot just go out and make changes in the production environment. Step six is we validate, so the information security team uh, would come in and validate and make sure that the controls which were agreed have all been implemented correctly. 
And then uh, once validation is done and everything is working properly in the test environment, everything on the application side, the database side, the server side is working correctly, we move the setup with the security implemented, uh, which was in the test environment to the production environment, and then we just monitor that. And finally, uh, there's an ongoing implementation, uh, you know, we implement in the production and, and then you monitor it. So step number seven was actually change management, and step number eight is implementation and monitoring. So for security hardening, there's a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, a slight difference in how we will implement the workflow for security hardening of software applications. Number one, you research the security controls like we saw on the previous slide. You apply the security controls, which is hardening in the test environment. Step number three, we need to do a code review and automated testing, uh, which is validation. So code review is there because the code has been written by a developer and we need to make sure that all the quality and the security aspects have been covered by the developer. And sometimes you have to use automated testing because the code could be thousands of lines or millions of lines of code. And, and uh, you do the manual code review, uh, but you also do automated code review and you could do um, automated tools. Uh, you could use automated tools to check for errors and bugs as well. And then finally, you need to go to the server environment because right now we've been dealing with the code in the software. So you need to go to the server environment and make sure the configuration is correct. And you may be using a web server, for example, and the web server and the operating system of the web server needs to be hardened as well. So that's very important. So there are two aspects. There's the software running on the application server and then the OS for the, you know, the application is hosted on a server and we need to make sure that server configuration is correct. And finally, in step number five, we would move everything to production and do a penetration test in the production environment prior to the launch of the business application, prior to the business launch. So, uh, and you do that and then you would give a clearance to business that, look, we've tested everything in the production environment and now we're ready for go live, uh, which is the business launch. Here are some useful resources uh, which you can refer to for security hardening of software. Um, OWASP, Open Web Application Security Project, is the top web security uh, platform, all free of cost. Uh, CloudSecurityAlliance.org, you should actually go here, and they're doing a lot of great research on the virtualization, the cloud, the IoT, and the mobile security also, and many, many aspects related to cloud security. Uh, you can go to Microsoft TechNet for guidelines. Um, there's a very famous web security um, guideline developed by OWASP, which is called OWASP Top 10, which lists the top 10 vulnerabilities, um, and they review it every three years. And the 2017 version is almost out now. They're in the final stages of review. And then a very important document, which is a generic document, is the OWASP Secure Coding Practices Quick Reference Guide. So if you look this up on Google, you'll come across a 17-page document. And then there's a software assurance maturity model, uh, which we uh, have talked about and uh, we, we have talked about in this course as well, which is developing the process flow and the maturity model. So uh, these are some screenshots. This is from OWASP Secure Coding Practices Quick Reference Guide. As you can see, they have uh, some control heads here, input validation, output encoding, authentication and password management, session management, access control, cryptographic practices, error handling and logging, data protection, communication security, system configuration, database security, file management, memory management, and general coding practices. So the OWASP Secure Coding Practices Quick Reference Guide talks about in detail in 17 um, summarized pages, all of these different aspects and, and, and there's actual checklists available there. And this is the new OWASP Top 10 2017 release candidate 2, RC2, which is still in the process of finalization, should be out very soon. This is the .NET uh, security cheat sheet. It has the .NET framework guidance, um, ASP.NET web forms guidance, and ASP.NET MVC guidance. So the conclusion is that software security is a challenging area because someone is actually developing, using the code to develop an application. So that would be based on certain approach, certain knowledge, certain skills, or the lack of it. And we need to do adopt various approaches to make sure the software is secure. And for this, you need to build a software security program 
and integrate with the quality assurance process um, in, inside the organization. So quality assurance and software security need to be integrated uh, together so that they offer a single window um, to the software developer rather than you know the software developer going to the quality assurance department, then fixing the bugs and then going to software security for testing and validation and then coming back and, and going through repeated cycles um, of uh, rework. So it should be all one single integrated process in the organization. And then you need domain specific knowledge to fix um, and develop a software security program because every different software application has its unique um, requirements for the software prof security professional to understand what is actually going on. So if uh, the application in, in your organization is on, based on ASP.NET, then you need to have an ASP.NET resource who um, has developed skills in security who can actually do the um, code review and the manual and automated testing. And, and you need to also build capabilities and follow the OWASP software assurance mar maturity model, for example, or the CMI model in order to gradually and incrementally improve the security of your organizational software. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.